Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dr. Somshikar Shetty, Department of uh, Biochemistry. I welcome all of you for this session. Today I am going to discuss on the topic on hyperlipoproteinemias. The fats digested and absorbed from the diet and the lipids are synthesized in the adipose tissue and in the liver are transported to the various tissues and organs for the utilization and storage. Lipids are insoluble molecules. In the aqueous environment of uh, plasma, these lipids are transported with the help of lipoproteins. Coming to the structure of uh, lipoproteins, lipoproteins are the macromolecular complexes of uh, lipids and proteins. A typical lipoprotein consists of a central lipid core of triacylglycerol and cholesterol esters. It is surrounded by a monolayer of phospholipids and cholesterol molecules. They are arranged in a such a way that the polar molecules are faced to the aqueous environment. The protein portion in the lipoprotein is called as apoproteins. Coming to the classification of lipoproteins, there are four major types of lipoproteins. This classification is according to their density. They are chylomicron, very low density lipoprotein, low density lipoprotein, high density lipoproteins. This classification mainly based on their density. These lipoproteins differ in their size, shape, charge, protein and uh, lipid content and their site of origin. Chylomicron is synthesized in the intestine and responsible for the transport of dietary triazylglycerol to the different parts of the body. Very low density lipoprotein is generated in the liver and is responsible for the endogenous uh, transport of triazylglycerol and is also the precursor for the formation of intermediary density lipoprotein and the low density lipoprotein. Next is the LDL, low density lipoprotein, is derived from VLDL in the blood, is responsible for the transport of cholesterol and cholesterol ester to the extrahepatic tissues. This is considered as bad cholesterol. Next one is high density lipoprotein. It is generated in the intestine and also in the liver. The main role of HDL is reverse cholesterol transport from tissues to liver. That means it takes all the cholesterol from the extrahepatic tissues and reaches to the liver for further metabolism. So this is considered as good cholesterol. Before discussing about the Disorders of lipoprotein metabolism. 
we should know the normal lipid profile. The total cholesterol is 150 to 200 milligram per deciliter. LDL cholesterol should be maintained in the range of uh, 60 to 130 milligram per deciliter. HDL cholesterol is uh, 40 to 60 milligram per deciliter. Triglyceride level is 60 to 150 milligram per deciliter. And the total cholesterol and HDL ratio should be less than less than 5. In humans, the lipid transport system is less efficient than in animals. As a result of uh, this, accumulation of lipids in tissues, mainly the cholesterol. Abnormality of uh, lipoprotein metabolism is mainly due to the defect in the synthesis or defect in the utilization area is uh, responsible for hyperlipoproteinemia. Now, we will move on to the different uh, types of hyperlipoproteinemia. The main complication here is elevation of lipids in plasma. Type 1 or familial lipoprotein lipase deficiency. So, what exactly this lipoprotein lipase is? This enzyme is the extracellular enzyme which is responsible for the degradation of chylomicron and very low density lipoprotein in the peripheral tissues. Here in this case, the lipoprotein lipase deficiency, that means the degradation of triazole glycerol present in the chylomicron and VLDL is not going to happen. So, TG accumulation. The another cause or the defect here is APOC2 deficiency. APOC2 is the activator of lipoprotein lipase enzyme. So, APOC2 is not there. So, no activation. So, inactivation of lipoprotein lipase. What are the clinical findings in this? Mainly, slow clearance of chylomicrons and VLDL in the peripheral tissues, in the tissue capillaries. So, VLDL chylomicron are increased, low LDL level is seen, hyper triglyceridemia, increased triglyceride level in the plasma and accumulation of triglyceride underneath the tissues known as eruptive xanthomas. Individuals at high risk of uh, acute pancreatitis in this case because uh, Triazyl glycerol is accumulated in the pancreas leads to acute pancreatitis. But here in this case, no increased risk of atherosclerosis. Type 2 A familial hypercholesterolemia. In this case, the defect is LDL receptor. So, LDL receptors are present on the membranes. So, they are responsible for the internalization of the LDL molecule to the cells. So, the receptor is defective. So, no intake of LDL into the cells. So, LDL remains in the circulation. And ApoB100 defect. ApoB100 is in the apoprotein present in the LDL, it acts as the ligand in between the LDL molecule and the LDL receptor. ApoB100 defect means so no, no internalization of the LDL molecule into the cells. The clinical findings includes here 
increase LDL low density lipoprotein, hypercholesterolemia, and atherosclerosis. Tuberous xanthomas, yellow plaque like uh, st structure is accumulated mainly the accumulation of cholesterol and uh, triacylglycerol over the elbows and knees. Type 2b familial combined hyperlipidemia. Here in this case decreased LDL receptor. Number of uh, LDL receptor itself is low. So that means uh, the low intake of LDL into the cells and uh, over production of ApoB. ApoB is expressed both in the intestine and also in the liver. Over production is another cause for type 2b familial combined hyperlipidemia. The clinical findings includes increased VLDL, increased LDL, increased triglyceride and cholesterol in plasma. Atherosclerosis is the major complications in this particular type. Type 3 is familial dis beta lipoproteinemia also known as broad beta disease. Here in this condition the defect is abnormal ApoE. Decrease clearance of chylomicrons and VLDL remnants. The ApoE receptors present in the liver. So the internalization of the nascent sorry the remnant chylomicron and uh, remnant VLDL is impaired no internalization of those to the liver so they are accumulates in the circulation so that means the clinical findings includes here increased chylomicron remnants increased VLDL remnants increase the triacylglycerol and cholesterol and xanthomas and atherosclerosis the major complications here Type 4, familial hypertriglyceridemia. The defect here is overproduction of very low density lipoprotein. Mainly due to here in this case type 2 diabetes mellitus. There we can see the glucose intolerance and the insulin level is normal or the above normal. So that may lead to the overproduction of VLDL. So, the findings includes here increased VLDL, increased triazoglycerol and cholesterol and associated with the diabetes mainly the type 2. Obesity is another uh, finding here because uh, abdominal obesity is uh, mainly the causative factor for insulin resistance. So, chronic alcoholism condition also we can see the type 4 familial hypertriglyceridemia. Type 5 mixed hypertriglyceridemia. So, the exact cause is uh, not clear or unknown, may be secondary to alcoholism, obesity, renal failure. The clinical findings include increased VLDL and chylomicrons in the circulation. The next one is Wolman's disease. This is the lysosomal uh, storage disorder of uh, cholesterol because the deficiency here in this case the cholesterol ester hydrolase. Cholesterol ester hydrolase cleaves the cholesterol molecule, cholesterol ester molecule to cholesterol and free fatty acids. So that is not going to happen here. So accumulation of cholesterol ester in the lysosomes and also decrease rate of LDL clearance is the defect here and clinical findings includes increased LDL, hypercholesterolemia and atherosclerosis. Coming to the other minor causes for hyperlipoproteinemias, hepatic lipase deficiency. Hepatic lipase, the enzyme, is very similar to lipoprotein lipase enzyme. This enzyme deficiency leads to increased triacylglycerol, HDL and VLDL remnants in the circulation. The next one is 
LCAT deficiency, lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase, the enzyme which is responsible for the esterification of cholesterol in the HDL metabolism. So in this case mature HDL level will be decreased and the nascent HDL level will be increased and it blocks the reverse cholesterol transport. The next one is the LPA excess, lipoprotein A excess. Lipoprotein A is similar to the LDL molecule. Increase the lip lipoprotein A concentration in the circulation increase the risk of atherosclerosis. So far we discussed the disorders associated with the lipoprotein metabolism. There are several other conditions are responsible for the increase the lipid level in the circulation or in the plasma. They are known as secondary hyperlipidemias. There are several conditions is responsible for increasing the lipid level in the blood. Diabetes mellitus. As all of you know, in diabetes mellitus, there is uh, insulin deficiency. Insulin deficiency is that means there is the huge impairment of carbohydrate metabolism and the lipid metabolism. In the case of lipid metabolism, insulin deficiency, the, the activation of uh, hormone sensitive lipase is there. This hormone sensitive lipase enzyme degrades the triacylglycerol in the adipose tissue. At that time, free fatty acid is elevated in the circulation and enters to the liver. There also, free fatty acid undergoes the oxidation, more of acetyl CoA is formed. So, more of acetyl CoA is responsible for the accumulation or the formation of TAG and also the formation of cholesterol. So, elevation of uh, TAG and also the cholesterol level increases. There are other complications also associated with diabetes uh, mellitus, which is uh, related to the lipoproteins. Nephrotic syndrome is the renal failure condition. Here in this case, the clearance of the lipid particle is uh, slows or impaired. So that means the elevation of the cholesterol and triacylglycerol is uh, uh, seen in the plasma. Hypothyroidism. Normally, the thyroid hormone is responsible for the LDL clearance. In hypothyroidism, what exactly happens is the low clearance of LDL. So, the low clearance of LDL leads to elevated level of triacylglycerol and also the cholesterol level. The next one is biliary obstruction. Biliary obstruction is uh, mainly due to the, the gallstones or cholelithiasis. In this condition, the the bile secretion from the liver into the intestine is blocked. So, for the formation of uh, bile salts, the cholesterol is required. So, no secretion means cholesterol is accumulated and spills out to the circulation. So, elevated cholesterol is seen in the biliary obstruction. The next uh, condition is chronic alcoholism. Alcoholism or the chronic alcoholism, they, the impairment of uh, lipid and uh, carbohydrate uh, metabolism due to the increase NADH NAD ratio. So, increase NADH NAD ratio impairs the carbohydrate metabolism and more of free fatty acid and triacylglycerol is elevated and uh, can see them in the circulation or in the plasma. 
oral contraceptives high consumption of oral contraceptives they are the hormonal therapy or the steroid hormones they are responsible for more of a tag synthesis and accumulation of tag also can be seen and also increases the tag level in the blood so far we discussed all the types of uh, hyperlipoproteinemia and also the secondary hyper lipidemia or hyperlipoproteinemia in almost all the situation there we have seen the formation of atherosclerosis or they are all responsible for atherosclerosis now i'll briefly explain the formation of atherosclerotic plaque high level of ldl cholesterol is common in all the hyperlipoproteinemia so what happens to this uh, high level of ldl cholesterol so in the metabolic uh, reactions or due to the oxidative stress or the high concentration of several oxidants there will be increase of superoxide radicals hydroxyl radicals peroxide radicals in the normal person what exactly happens is we have antioxidants to maintain the balance of oxidants they are vitamin c vitamin e beta carotene and antioxidant enzymes so that they are responsible for to check the concentration of oxidants in the case of high concentration of oxidants due to several types of stress and also the chronic uh, in the chronic smokers so oxidation of ldl cholesterol is more there you know the oxidized ldl concentration or the modified ldl concentration will become more this oxidized or the modified ldl consumed by the macrophages in some in sub endothelium and forms foam cells so accumulated foam cells releases growth factors and cytokines and they are responsible for the proliferation of smooth muscle in blood vessel wall that leads to the hardening of the arteries by plaque formation and the formation of the plaque narrows of or narrowing of lumen of uh, blood vessel due to the minor friction also there in their particular area clot formation may happen clot formation is mainly due to endothelial injury and it further blocks the lumen of the coronary artery and so blocks the lumen of the coronary artery means decreased blood supply decreased blood supply means decreased oxygen supply to myocardium so that leads to the decrease atp synthesis in that particular area leads to ischemia and necrosis of tissues that leads to myocardial infarction this is the picture of the formation of atherosclerotic plaque now we'll move on to how we can manage this hypercholesterolemia diet the patient who suffer from hypercholesterolemia they should avoid the fatty foods butter beef fat saturated fatty acids egg yolk and the red meats they should avoid these particular things in their diet they should consume more of uh, monounsaturated fatty acid 
polyunsaturated fatty acids they should consume more of uh, vegetables and also fruits lifestyle plays a very important role in man in the management of hypercholesterolemia sedentary lifestyle is bad person who suffer from hypercholesterolemia they should exercise any type of exercise can say aerobic exercise yoga and meditation is so very helpful playing any type of games at least for 1 hour in a day and walking at least for 45 to 1 hour duration is helps in the decreasing the blood cholesterol level and other lipid level in the blood that's mainly due to the insulin sensitivity so insulin is uh, secreted which is uh, activates the enzyme lipoprotein lipase enzyme and the lipoprotein lipase enzyme is responsible for the degradation of triacylglycerol in the circulation and the products which are formed are glycerol and fatty acid is properly distributed to the various parts of the body if these uh, two types of management fails means the physician will prescribe drugs to those patients mainly the lipid lowering drugs or the cholesterol lowering drugs are prescribed cholesterol lowering drugs includes mevastatin lovastatin rosuvastatin they are inhibits the cholesterol biosynthesis so decreases the blood cholesterol level beta cytosterol is the plant sterol incorporation it leads to decreases the absorption of cholesterol so that cholesterol level is uh, maintained clofibrate is the another drug and also several drugs are there to brings down the lipid level in the blood thank you